folks, once again, coming to you live on tape from a not so undisclosed secret location here in beautiful downtown St. John's on the oldest commercial street in North America and actually the most recently uh, downtown in North America comes in the Library of Graphic Literature. Today's Field trip edition. So, uh, with your host, me, Ross Roy. So, as you can see, I'm here on uh, Water Street in downtown St. John's. As I said before, it is the oldest commercial street in North America and it's lined with shops. This year, actually, as you can see around me, there's people walking up and down here uh, because this year they decided to turn it into a pedestrian mall. And it was at the be test or at the because of a petition that I myself launched for, to turn this and another street into a uh, to pedestrian uh, way for the summer. It'd be a good way to uh, get people out after the uh, 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 winter and spring uh, uh, of COVID, and uh, you know, get uh, help out the uh, the local businesses too. So as you can see, this is it's a beautiful day here, and it, it is bloody crowded. And I mean bloody crowd. So um, what I'm going to do today is I am going to talk about some new books that I did bring here uh, that I'm going to review but also too the big thing that I'm going to uh, do today is read off the winners of the Eisner Awards. So yesterday the Eisner Awards were uh, doled out in uh, well virtually in San Diego and, uh, and I have a list here of the, of the winners. So, and I'm going to read every single one of the winners too. Not just a partial list, not just a bit of a list, not just the greatest hits of the list, the whole list. So here we go folks, the Eisner Award winner. Doom, doom, doom. And uh, just as a note, myself and uh, my good buddy Dennis Osborne, we uh, pulled a list of 11 categories. And we got four out of the 11, so um, shows what we know, hey? <laughs> anyway, oh, and next week on uh, Thursday Comics is our Giant Size Edition, issue number one. And we'll be talking about the, uh, we'll be talking about the best, or our favorite, the best uh, Marvel Omnibuses. Uh, each of our, we, we did up a list of 10 each. And, and we didn't tell each other what was on the list, so it's, it's it's an hour-long episode, but it's 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 a good bit of fun. So check it out. Anyway, here we go. Eisner Award winners. Okay, best short story. Oh, I'll take off my glasses for this. Uh, the best short story is Hot Comb by Ebony Flowers in Hot Comb, drawn and quarterly. Best single issue one shot. Our our favorite thing is my favorite thing is Monsters by Emil Fares. Way to go, Emil. Uh, Best Continuing Series, and this is quite a bit of a surprise, Bitter Root by Dave Walker, Chuck Brown, and Sanford Green for Image. Quite, quite a surprise for most people. Best Limited Series, and this is one of the ones actually we called, Little Bird by Darcy Van Polgeest and Ian Bertram. Best New Series, Invisible Kingdom by G. Willow Wilson and Christian Ward for Burger Books. Way to go, Karen. Uh, best Publication for Early Reg Readers. Comics, Easy as ABC by Ivan Brunetti. Best Publication for Kids, of course. Guts by Raina Telgemeier, of course, who else? Uh, best Publication for Teens, Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell, her first second. Best Humor Publication, The Way of the House Husband, Volume 1 by Kozuki Ono. For Viz, Best Anthology, Drawing Power, Women's Story of Sexual Violence, Harassment, and Survival, edited by Deanne Newman for Abrams. Best Reality Work, and this is a, a, a good one, They Called Us Enemy by George Takai, George, uh, Justin Essinger, Stephen Scott, and Harmony Becker. So it looks like uh, George has finally uh, pulled in a Eisner Award. Way to go, George. Uh, best Graphic Album New, Are You Listening? by Tilly Walden for first second. Best Graphic Album Reprint, La Guardia by Nita 
Okra for and Kana Ford for Burger Books. Once again, way to go, uh, Burger Books. It's two there now. Best adaptation from an another medium. Snow Glass Apples by Neil Gaiman and Colleen Dorn. Way to go, Neil. Best U.S. edition of International Material, The House by Paca Roca uh, for Frantic Graphics. Best U.S. edition of International Material Asia, Cats of the Louvre. And it's a tie this week, which, which at Atelier. So not bad. Uh, Viz and Kodansha uh, tied up there. Best archival collection strips, and this is the one that we did actually call, is Crazy Cat, The Complete Color Sundays by George Harriman. Uh, best archival collection project, Stan Sakai's Usagi Yojimbo, The Complete Grass Cutter Artist Select Series. Hey, what can you do? Best writer, Mariko Tamaki for Harley Quinn, Breaking Glass, or Dan Doran Keeps Breaking Up With Me, and Archie, surprisingly enough. Uh, best writer artist, of course, Rainer Telkemeyer for Guts. Way to go, Rainer. Best penciler, inker, or penciler, inker team, Rosemary ba Valero O'Connell, or Dern Dean Keeps <laughs> Breaking Up With Me. Keep saying Dern uh, for first second. Uh, best painter, digital artist, Christian Ward, Invisible Kingdom. Another Burger Books. Uh, best cover artist, Emma Rios, Pretty Deadly. Best coloring, of course, Dave Stewart for, well, everything. <laughs> best lettering, Stan Sky for Yusagi Yojimbo. It should have been my eyes there. <laughs> uh, best comics related periodical journalism, Women Write About Comics, edited by Nola Fow and Wendy Brown. Best comics related book, Making Comics by Linda Barry, drawn in Quarterly, a Canadian company. Best academic and scholarly work, The Peanuts Papers, writers and cartoons on Charlie Brown, Snoopy and the Gang, and the Meaning of Life. Edited by Andrew Blonder, The Library of America. Okay. Best publication design, Making Comics, designed by Linda Barry, and Best Digital Comic, Afterlift by Chip, Chip Zdarsky and Jason Liu, Comicsology Originals. And last but not least, Best Web Comic, Fried Rice Comic by Erica A. So there we go, folks. That is the complete list of the Eisner Awards. Congratulations to all the winners. Um, congratulations to even those who, who got nominated. I always say to people when they're asking about what comic should I read, what's, what would you recommend, and stuff like that, I say, say to them, go to find a list of the winners of the Eisner Award, and not only the ones who win, but even people who are nominated. Because if your if your book gets nominated for the Eisner, then you probably deserve it. Anyway, so let's get back to the present and to some books that came out this week. Of course, uh, one of my favorite here, Chronicles of Quorum, and this is by Mark Shane Bloom and Jill Thompson, and. Uh, Bull in the Spear. I, re I read these these originally when they came out um, in, in in prose form, and I got to say the quorum, uh, well, uh, really all all the Michael Moorcock stuff is is some of the most imaginative fantasy writing I've ever come across in my life. So this one I would highly recommend, and, and actually the entire series, everything from Pete Craig Russell's Elric right through to uh, Hawk Moon. Uh, this Swords of Heaven, Flowers of Hell, uh, the Chaken uh, Morcock uh, creation. But this one too. Beautiful artwork by Jill Thompson. And like I say, just absolutely great stories. Definitely one of the most highly imaginative uh, science fiction fantasy writers out there. Uh, the past 50 years, I think Michael Moorcock is one of the most underrated of them all. And the funny thing is, is you can't find his books in print. I had all these books in, in prose when I was a kid, but now it's bloody impossible. I don't know if it's a rights issue or what the heck it is, but come on, someone someone should get it, get it together and, uh, and do a collection of, of uh, some of the best of Michael Moorcock. Okay, and now, from first second comes the Golden Age. Roxanne Morell and Cyril 
Pedroza. Uh, the artwork in this just it's just bloody excellent. Uh, I'm not very familiar with it. What does it say on the back? It's rightful here of the late King Ronan. Hey, I got a friend named Ronan. <laughs> Tilla wants to deliver her people from famine and strife. Strife. But on the eve of her coronation, her younger brother, backed by a cabal of our hunger lords, usurps her throne and casts her into exile. So that's just the start. I'm not going to read the rest of it there to you. You're going to have to pick it up. But the artwork itself is just absolutely cool. Palette uh, seems to shift from story to from page to page, and uh, I, I actually can't wait to get home and, and have a read of this. It looks pretty good. Check it out. I'm going through this just because it has such a cool palette, so I wanted everyone to see a little bit of of each of them. See, check it out. Definitely worth that. Definitely yeah, worth picking up, I'd say. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, first second, first second actually has been coming out with some first rate books the past few years, and uh, this one even just from the look of it. And I'm gonna hopefully get a chance to read this this week. I got a lot of comics to do the weekend, so I know uh, how much reading I'm actually gonna get done. Ta da! So yeah, pretty cool. Definitely worth picking up. The Golden Age. Ain't that a beautiful cover too? And <laughs> you know it is. <laughs> now, last, but definitely not the least, is from 10 Speed Press and Tom Scioli comes Jack Kirby, the epic life of the king of comics. Now, of course, what kind of introduction can I give to a book on Jack Kirby? Just the fact that, of course, he is known as the king of comics. Uh, the man basically helped write the vocabulary of the art form over the past, uh, well, for, for most of the uh, 20th century anyway. And, uh, and, it's, and it's great to have see someone actually uh, come up with something and, uh, and and go for it. Scioli, I love his work on, on Godland and, uh, and uh, this when I seen that he was the one doing this I thought oh this is probably this is probably so so gonna be worth it. So uh, I like the style I like the uh, the coloring of the pages from the, the published look to it. So it goes through here, so it was early life here, working working at uh, Popeye. Then him uh, get together with uh, Joe Simon eventually. There we go. Working in Fox's studio and Andy with that. I nice heard I girl. So yeah. Oh, and here we go. This is the. Uh, this is where he comes in with Joe. And of course, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, one of the great power teams of comics for decades. The create the co-creators of Captain America. And I was lucky. I never did get to meet Jack, but I at least got to meet Joe. So yeah. This looks super cool. Then his war years here, and then, he, then uh, when he comes back from the war, and uh, goes through talking, and then right up until the Marvel years, which is coming up right around here now, anyway, where he more or less created most of the Marvel universe created some of the coolest characters that you can ever see. There's his work on Thor, one of my personal favorites. And then it goes through to his moving to uh, DC in the fourth world. And uh, so yeah, yeah, I can hardly wait to crack this baby and 
have a look at it. Yeah, Kirk, Jack Kirby, one of the the kings, or the king of comics. Yeah, I like the, the I like the illustration on the cover because that that looks like that that really does look like Jack. So yeah, pick it up, Jack Kirby, the Epic Life of the King of Comics. Definitely worth buying. Anyway, that's uh, I guess that's it for for this week. Uh, it was actually kind of a a small week when it came to books, but. Hey, that, that ain't my fault. <laughs> and uh, and when I knew the uh, Eisner Awards were coming out, it's just like, yeah, I have to do have to do a reading of of, of the uh, of all the categories, just give everyone their due. Oh, yeah. So anyway, as you can see there, the still pretty crowded here uh, down on Water Street in St. John's Beach Land on this wonderful Saturday afternoon. Uh, I was going to shoot this last night, but then it was just like, you know, I seen the weather and I knew it was going to be beautiful downtown, so it was just like, yeah, I got to get at least one, and especially down here on the mall, uh, I got to get at least one episode shot there. Now, hopefully, sooner or later, before the end of the summer, I'm going to get out and get to, uh, get out closer to the ocean so that you can see the sea uh, behind me as, as I talk about the best in comics, collected editions, and graphic novels. Anyway, with that, uh, don't forget, of course, oh yes, and the other big thing is uh, I got the official notifi notification this week, uh, the email from uh, YouTube that says I hit 1,000, so I posted that to the page there today. So uh, get out there, folks, and uh, see how many other people you can sign up to watch my show. That being said, uh, oh yes, and of course, check out this week's uh, Thursday Comics uh, podcast with me and Dennis Osborne, a very good episode. Check out next week's Thursday Comics, Giant Size Edition number one. It's a, uh, a great look at the 10 best Marvel omnibuses for the Silver Age, too, by the way. I should mention that. But yeah, check it out, and uh, I'll see you in uh, seven days' time, or even less. Thanks for having me over, as we say here, and keep on reading the comics. Oh my God, I'm being sucked off this bench here. <laughs> yeah, I don't have my uh, box with me. So anyway, thanks a lot. See you later.